Assalamu alaikum everyone. This is my very first video regarding the research internship at OIS. If I talk about myself, who I am, and why I'm making these videos, so the simple answer is I recently graduated from Pakistan and I have been selected here for research internship just after my sixth semester. So currently I'm working in a Kosumi unit and my internship will expand for the sixth month. So I'm just making the videos to have the student who want to be here, not only as a research intern, but for PhD as well. So in this video, I will talk about what is the application deadline, how many times in a year OIS run an application for research intern. Second one is what is eligibility criteria to apply for this internship. And third one is what kind of document you require to apply for this. So just go and grab this opportunity. So if I if I talk about application round, so always run two times application in a year. The first is for spring intake and the second is for fall intake. So for right now, the application intake is running for the spring. So the deadline is for apply is 15th of October, and you get your result if you are lucky to, to be selected here, you get your result in a late December. And then your period of internship will be from the first week of April to the last of September. And similar in the sense, OIST also run application for the fall intake. So for the fall 2024 intake, your application deadline is 15th of April. And then right after the two months, you get your result. And then your period of internship will be start from the first week of October 2024 to the last week of March 2025. So if I'm talking about the what is eligibility criteria to apply for this internship, then the students who are in a final second year of undergraduate, I mean to say from fifth semester to onwards eighth semester, they are eligible to apply for this internship. And also the students who are studying the masters in, in the university, college or junior high school, they can also apply for this. The third one is vocational students who are who are currently studying in Japan or overseas, they can also apply. But the PhD student can't apply for this internship. The second one is what kind of document you require to apply for this internship. So let's get talk about the documents required. So the first one is is your photo. Even when you are signed up for your individual admission portal, you need a photo. Right. So I just wrote down all the uh, all the criteria of what kind of photo you need to take to apply for this internship. The first one is your photo should be taken in a last three months that reflect your current appearance. The second one, it should be taken in a front of plain white background. So uh, in any kind of international scholarship or internship, you need a photo of yourself with a white background, not the blue, not the black one, and not any background which have some kind of scene or et cetera. So the third one is your photo should be taken in a full face and your face should be directly towards the camera. And the fourth one is when you are taking your photo, your expression should be neutral. And you can upload your photo in, in maybe a PDF format or JPG format. So I here depicted the two picture. So if you are not uh, covering your head, your, your picture should be like this with neutral face expression and there is no any color background behind this, the girl, girl picture. And the second one, if you are wearing hijab, then your picture should be look like this. Like, I'm not saying that you should be look like this, but I'm saying your appearance, your white background, and your neutral face expression. So these one are correct. But I also depicted here the picture in which a girl is smiling and also the shadow on, on the face of the girl and the side posing a lot of fear on her face make a ambiguous personality. The, the This one is a girl with uh, sunglasses or glasses on her face. The, the fifth one is a blur. And now uh, here, the, the girl wearing a mask, which does not indicate her identity. And the last one is covering her head like this. Okay, so all these pictures should obviously not correct. So you don't 
you can't proceed your application with these kind of pictures. So the next one is your passport. So if you are applying for any international scholarship or internship, you must have a passport because you, you can't go abroad without having your passport. So you need a passport. The third one is your transcript or your results card. So if you are not graduated yet, so you just need to scan all your academic transcript and then make a PDF file. So if, if you have already graduated, then you need to attach your previous degrees like BSc, MSc, or BS. So, and if you are undergraduate, you can also attach your FAC or metric result card. Uh, but please not all kind of transcript or result card you are attaching, it must be in English. Otherwise, it will not be accepted. The fourth one is diploma or the HOP certificate. So diploma is for those students who completed their degree. I'm just talking about the M I'm talking about the BS or M MS degree. So the student who already uh, uh, pursuing their PhD in their country, they can't apply for this internship. So, so if you didn't get your diploma or degree, you can also apply on the base of hope certificate, which indicate your predicted or expected um, graduation date. So this kind of hope certificate or diploma, it should be in PDF format. So all kind of thing that I'm talking here is officially written on the website of OIST. And the certificate of enrollment is also called as HOP certificate. You just go to your director academics in your university and said you are going to apply for some kind of internship or scholarship and you need to um, have a HOP certificate, then they will definitely issue you a HOP certificate. Fifth one is your certificate of registration. So if you are a current student, your concerned department will issue a bona fide certificate. So this certificate indicates that you are a student of that university in that department. Okay, but if you are graduated, then you may add your character certificate as well. So a certificate of registration is also called as bona fide certificate. If your university issue a certificate, a certificate of registration, then it's okay. But if your university issue your bona fide certificate, then it's also okay. These two, two things are same. The sixth one, which is most important, and even it's a uh, it's a kind of document that decide whether or not you will select it here. So this is most important uh, document that you need to apply for research internship. Without it, you you can't apply for this. So statement of purpose. So it should be four hundred words or twenty five hundred characters, and. Uh, and it should contain all the following points. The first one is how your selected research unit match with your expertise. The second one is what you consider this internship with your overall career plan. The third one is what do you want to accomplish at OIS? And the fourth one, if you are really interested in multiple research units, please explain briefly each of the unit in just one line. So this is really a very, very important document. So if you are planning to write a statement of purpose, then your statement of purpose should be answered these four questions. Otherwise, this will not fulfill the requirement of OIST. So the seventh is a CV or circulum wide. So this, the CV, if you are going to plan uh, to make a CV or you already have CV, then you can just match these points with your CV. And if you are not or uh, if you are not at make CV, then you can make the CV according to these points. So the first one in, in your CV is your introduction. So introduction, uh, that there should be your name, your email address, your photo. But if you don't want to paste your photo, then it's okay. It, it is not necessary. And your research interests. The second one is academic background. So in academic background, you may mention your current and previous degree your marks or your CGPA details and your major subject. The third one is professional experience. In this section, this is very important section. In this section, you may, you may describe your projects, your training workshops, your seminars, your internships, and uh, any kind of article if you are uh, author or co-author. 
So the fourth one is skills. If uh, there are two kinds of skills, soft skill and hard skill, you may mention both. So the fifth one is your extracurricular activities. Like you can mention some sport or some other kind of debates, maybe English or other kind of national language that you have in your country. And the sixth one is certificate or award that you, if you have any. And the seventh one is your language test. So for OIST, IELTS is not, not mandatory, but if you have IELTS, this will give you an edge over other party, over other applicants or participants. So the eighth one is professor references. In the last of your CV, you should have quoted the reference from your home university professor. The eighth one, this is also very important recommendation letter without, without sending a single recommendation letter you can't submit your application. Your application will only be submitted when you when you send or the OIST receive one recommendation letter from your side. So the recommendation letter is from your academic professor and you should make sure that you have a consent of your referee before you write an email to admission portal of OIST. So you should write an email to recommender via the OIST application system. And then your recommender will automatically receive email from OIST. And then when your recommender send a letter, then you, I mean the applicant that are applying for this internship will automatically receive an email that the OIST received the recommendation letter from his or her professor. And after, uh, you need to submit at least one and not more than three letters. So, and also OIS does not accept any letter via email from applicants. So you just write an email or admission portal to, to your recommender. You, you can't send recommendation letter by yourself, right? So this is all about hope I help you. If, you, if, you, if it's really help you, then please make like it.